Hey, hello, students. Let's get started. Oh, wrong F key. There we go. Uh, so these are the lectures for Chapter 12, Affiliation and Attraction, uh, Interpersonal Relationships. Uh, so, uh, you know, I hope that you've read the chapter on interpersonal relationships so you know the background material. And this uh, lecture is going to build on that and look at specific topics in the area. Oh, and by the way, uh, I like to include this photo as an illustration of the uh, universality of interpersonal relationships and the need that we have for interpersonal relationships, not just as human beings, but as uh, uh, hominids. Uh, in case you don't know the story behind this, uh, this guy here is a worker in a refuge for uh, gorillas, and this is a juvenile or a teenage gorilla, uh, and his mother was just killed by poachers. And the gorilla, as you can tell, is very sad, and he's being comforted, comforted by a friend. And this illustrates many things, but uh, one of the things that illustrates is uh, the universality of the need for affiliation uh, in uh, hominids, uh, you know, humans, gorillas, chimpanzees, but also the, should I say, humanity of uh, uh, gorillas. Uh, and remember, gorillas are uh, endangered of extinction. And I think that, you know, if we continue going the way we are now, uh, your grandchildren definitely will see the last gorilla alive, or at least the last gorilla uh, alive in the wilds. Uh, so uh, it's a really sad thing when we t think about the end of a species that's so similar to us. So the topics that I like to focus on that I think are critically important or interesting uh, are proximity, uh, physical attraction, race and attraction, and obesity. And so let's take a look at these topics. First off, let's look at uh, you know uh, proximity or propinquity. Uh, uh, proximity or propinquity, which is a synonym for it, uh, is in attraction research the closeness, the physical closeness between two individuals with respect to where they live, where they sit in the classroom, which uh, dorm room is in relation to their dorm room, uh, and so on. Researchers have found that it requires short physical distance or smaller physical distances to increase the likelihood that two people will interact with each other and that interaction causes or is a catalyst for uh, them becoming uh, close friends or uh, you know interpersonally attracted to each other. And uh, the key is uh, the repeated exposure that is, your neighbor who lives next door to you in a house next door or an apartment uh, next door or somebody who you sit next to every uh, day uh, in class, except this semester, most likely. Uh, you see them every day. And the one thing that we know from research is that these chance encounters, these chance pairings, uh, where you have close proximity, uh, usually leads to more friendships being formed. And we know that, uh, you know, from research, but why? And it comes down to the idea of repeated exposure, or sometimes it's called mere exposure. And this is, uh, you know, developed by Robert Zions, uh, and there's Bob there in his office uh, at uh, University of Michigan. And uh, he, Robert Zions is just a fantastic, or was a fantastic, social psychologist and, uh, you, know, you know, discovered so many amazing things, especially, uh, you know, repeated exposure. So famous that, you know, they say that you can't get out of a social psychology course without knowing how to pronounce his last name. It's Zions. It rhymes with science kind of more or less. So no, not Jeansink or something like that. It's Zions. Uh, so that's how you pronounce his name. It rhymes with science. And 
he uh, developed the theory of a re repeated exposure where he said that frequent contacts with any first off mildly negative or definitely neutral or positive stimulus results in increasingly positive evaluations of that stimulus. So he said that uh, as long as the stimulus, and that could be a person, it could be a TV show, it could be a song, it could be a room, uh, you know, as long as you really don't hate it, as long as you just mildly hate it, or are neutral or slightly positive, the more often you see or smell or hear that stimulus, the more likely you're going to like it. And this explains the power of proximity in uh, you know, uh, you know, interpersonal relations in that the more often you see somebody, the more, you know, more and more you like them uh, more positively. That is, your attitude towards them becomes more positive. So therefore, oh, time to stop for a phone call. Okay, and so we're back after the phone call. And so anything that is not really horrible, the more often you see it, the more you'll uh, feel more favorably towards it or you'll like it. And uh, this occurs across people, across images, across sounds, across smells. In fact, okay, wake up. There we go. Uh, let's do a little demonstration of it. So I'm going to show you two pictures of myself. Uh, I'll let you see them once, but uh, decide which one you like the better, uh, number one or number two. So here's bill number one. Take a look, take a gander. That's not bill number two, that's a raccoon, so you won't be able to compare the photos. And here's bill number two. So which one do you prefer? Do you prefer bill number two or bill number one? And actually, we're going to differ because bill number one is my mirror reversed image and bill number two is the correct orientation. And generally, people prefer their mirror reversed image, and other people prefer the correct orientation, and you are going to uh, prefer the correct orientation the more that I've had my camera on, or the more that you've seen my camera on this semester, because that's the mirror exposure effect. And I will leave it up to you to figure out why I prefer the mirror reversed image more than my normal correct orientation image. Uh, and uh, you know that's true for everyone. They we all prefer our mirror reversed image. That's why when we see a photo of ourselves, we're like, "Ooh, I look like that." You have that first initial response because of the mirror exposure effect. Because it makes us like our mirror image more than our correct image. And that's it for the part one of our lecture. I'm going to break them up into smaller lectures. So I'll see you for part number two.